pleasure to uh, welcome our next speaker, Sven Ruin from Sweden. Sven, you are working for a company um, Terok, and uh, you are now um, talking and uh, sharing your information about um, how to choose the right small wind turbine. Sven, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stefan, and um, hello to everyone from Sweden. Uh, I hope you can hear me. And yes, very good. Yes, it looks like that. And uh, now I will um, uh, share my screen uh, with the presentation. So um, this will, of course, be my view of uh, how to choose a small wind turbine. Um, of course, uh, there are different perspectives on this. And uh, uh, as I explain here about uh, me, uh, I'm a consultant. Um, I'm an engineer working with um, uh, wind and hybrid systems. So I have an engineering perspective on this. So I'm not telling you uh, how to um, uh, choose the right color on your wind turbine. Um, I'm not telling you how to uh, check out the economy of the supplier uh, to see if they uh, are likely to stay in business um, or anything like that. Uh, I have also uh, written two books, uh, the latest one with Joran Sidian about uh, renewable energy. Uh, so uh, first of all, as was uh, pointed out earlier, uh, find out about wind conditions and uh, one tool uh, which can be used for this uh, is the Global Wind Atlas. Uh, I will show you more uh, of that later. Uh, what is uh, rather special with it is that it can provide average wind speed down to 10 meter above uh, ground. Uh, many other uh, wind maps um, only show uh, heights that are relevant for large wind turbines, so around 100 meters above ground, and uh, uh, there the wind resource will be much uh, higher than closer to the ground, of course. Uh, what they also have uh, is the possibility to see uh, a wind rose uh, for the site. And I've been told that in half a year, they should also have a function to um, see an estimation of your extreme wind speed. Uh, however, um, keep in mind that a, a wind map um, like this um, does not tell you anything about local obstacles or turbulence. Uh, so uh, you, you really need to take that into account also. So uh, here is a screen dump from the Global Wind Atlas. I made it for the location where I am now, outside the shopping, uh, Sweden. Uh, this is an inland location, so the wind conditions are not very good. Um, the average wind speed on 10 meters shown here is uh, about four meters per second according to the Global Wind Atlas. And you can see the wind rows they have presented here. Um, I have measured wind uh, here at the office and um, uh, the wind rows is very accurate. Um, uh, when I compare the wind speed uh, in the Global Wind Atlas to uh, what uh, I have here, I um, think the Global Wind Atlas has overestimated the resource a bit, but that could be because of some local obstacles um, which are in, in, in the vicinity of, of our site here. Um, I will go through this rather quickly because I uh, don't have so much time for the presentation. Uh, I can just mention that uh, with, with the average wind speed um, and uh, the swept area of the turbine, uh, you can uh, make a rather good estimate of what the turbine can produce. Here is an equation for a horizontal axis wind turbine, which assumes um, certain conditions. Uh, so it's not, of course, valid for um, every turbine. If you make a really poor design, it will not live up to this and there could possibly be some great designs which are slightly better um, but this gives you a, a, a rule of thumb um, estimation anyway which you can can use for for a, a basic rough estimate 
Uh, and in addition, the average wind speed can help determine how strong turbine that is suitable. And uh, by that I mean what small wind turbine class. Uh, and um, I, I will go uh, into this um, a little more now. Uh, so the international standard for small wind turbines, IEC 61400-2, defines four standard classes for small wind turbines. And uh, uh, small wind turbine class four is the least demanding. It corresponds to an average wind speed of six meters per second, a 50 year extreme wind speed, that's a gust wind speed of 42 meters per second and medium turbulence. Uh, so that was a least demanding class. Uh, the, the sites that uh, I come across where small wind turbines are installed are usually um, less demanding uh, when it comes to the wind speed than class four. So, so actually class four will work on many sites as long as the turbulence is not too bad. Uh, but of course there are also certain sites with more demanding wind conditions when, when the tougher classes are really needed. There is also a class S where um, the other wind conditions can be defined, uh, for example, more turbulent. So uh, the idea is that the wind turbine manufacturer designs and tests the turbine for certain conditions, including uh, the small wind turbine class, and as a buyer, you want to select a turbine that's designed and tested for the conditions you can expect on your site or more demanding conditions. So you c compare uh, what, what can I expect on my site and what uh, conditions are the turbine designed for. So as an example, if your site corresponds to small wind turbine class three, don't select a small wind turbine class four turbine. Um, however, be aware that some parameters are not covered by this. For example, in Sweden, uh, we can have sites in the mountains where the icing is um, uh, really important and um, uh, th there is uh, nothing about icing uh, uh, as a um, mandatory requirement in, in the uh, standard wind turbine classes. Uh, but uh, if, if we go to uh, more practical experiences, uh, look for results from real life, of course. Uh, as was mentioned uh, earlier, uh, ask, are there independent references? And I would say it's important then to consider conditions similar to or more demanding than my site. Uh, if you are going to place the turbine, uh, uh, for example, in, in a mountainous region where it can be extremely windy and turbulent. Uh, if, if the same turbine works on a nice, flat, low wind site, um, uh, you could have a totally different experience uh, in, in a mountainous area. Uh, and um, are there any reliable test results measured according to standard? Uh, here we come to a, a, a special challenge with the small wind turbines. Um, I find that very much of the information published uh, about them uh, cannot be trusted. So, so uh, I, I would really uh, like to stress, look, look for reliable sources. Uh, a consumer label it can give you a good summary uh, and um, I will come back to that. And third, is the turbine certified? That normally involves more than testing. And I should perhaps clarify that uh, when I say certified, I mean certified by a third party, like uh, the Norske Veritas or, or some other reputable uh, certification organization. Uh, sometimes this word is used in, in, in other ways, but, but certification, uh, that I mean is a very costly process. When it's done, it, it can really be helpful to understand uh, that the turbine uh, design has been checked and it's been tested thoroughly, uh, but it comes at a high cost. Here is an example of the international uh, consumer label uh, defined by the IEC. 
Uh, this is for a, a combination of turbine and tower uh, called Giraffe uh, 2 uh, by Innoventum in Sweden. Uh, but the turbine is actually a wind spot turbine. Um, I should also say that um, the, the reference annual energy here is only for the wind turbine. Uh, the solar PV panels will produce a number of thousand kilowatt hours uh, in addition to this. Uh, you can see that there is also a declared sound power level. I will come back to that. And the turbine test class. That means the turbine has gone through a, a duration test uh, to, to this uh, test class. You can see who has tested it. And also, most important, for this label to be valid, the test reports must be available. So uh, there are two types of consumer labels. Um, I have compiled information about uh, two of them. Um, the first is the international label I, I showed you uh, before. And the, the second one uh, is US labels. Uh, it's important to understand the two main differences between them. The IC label is based on testing only. Uh, the US labels uh, show that the turbine has actually been certified to a, an American standard. That means it's not only been tested, it's gone through uh, also a check of uh, calculations, etc. But also uh, the definition of uh, sound or noise used is different. Uh, I don't have time to go into the details here, but be careful not to confuse sound power level and sound pressure level. Uh, the international label uses sound power level, the American sound pressure level at a certain distance from the turbine. Um, then there are also some formal requirements to consider. Um, I'm in Sweden, which is part of the European economic area. So here CE marking is mandatory. And be aware that CE marking is not the same as third party certification. A CE marking is usually just a, a self declaration from the manufacturer that the turbine in this case fulfills all European requirements to be sold here in Europe. Uh, and um, this is, of course, very easy to cheat with when it's just a self-declaration. Uh, so it's necessary, but can, can be sometimes uh, misleading, unfortunately. And, and for manufacturers, be aware that the European Machinery Directive actually requires a turbine to be possible to stop. So um, this is something I think many both manufacturers and users of wind turbines are not aware of and I believe many products on the market are actually illegal to sell here. Um, this is one of the reasons. Um, and for grid connection, uh, ask your electrical utility before buying the turbine. They will have certain requirements um, if you are going to connect the turbine to the grid, even if it's on your side of the meter. And for some other markets, uh, different types of certification can be required, uh, for example, for subsidy. And I would like to stress that proper third party certification is very good to have also for other reasons. Um, I mean, in Sweden, you're not required to have this, but you need to prove sometimes to the official that the quality is sufficient. And uh, then the certificate can be very good to have. Now, um, also, I would like to just quickly remind you, don't forget, consider the entire system also including support structure. Uh, some wind turbine manufacturers tend to forget this and uh, um, it's an important part of, of your system. So you should not forget it. Um, also, very important, how will you be able to maintain your small wind turbine? We have too many cases in Sweden where the supplier is out of business and um, uh, wind turbine owners are, are stuck with a turbine which is uh, very difficult or sometimes impossible to maintain. That's why I uh, also work with open source solutions. Uh, so that was all from me. Um, uh, 
I give advice on small wind turbines for the Swedish Wind Energy Association, uh, and I also work at, at Terok. So you can contact me if you like at this Terok address or through the, the wind organization. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Sven. I think that was an excellent, again, overview of uh, what is important when you choose a small wind turbine. We've been discussing the matter in particular of certification now for many, many years. And Sven, you've been one of the initiators of this consumer label, where we as World Wind Energy Association also have tried to support this process to make it simpler for small wind turbines to get certified, still keeping the high standards that we need in terms of uh, safety, but also in terms of uh, the yield, which we actually need from small wind turbines. Now, this, this has been one of the, the, the key aspects as we've been working more than a decade on this um, and always coming back to that aspect.